I'm Al. I'm Jared. We're from the Technicolor Dreamers, and you're watching The Music Enthusiast. Hi, I'm Sarah from The Music Enthusiast. Technicolor Dreamers, how are you guys? Good, Sarah. How are you doing? Very, very good. I'm doing good. It's so good, great to talk to you. I checked out your EP, and it's so great. So how are you, you feeling about Thank that you. being released? It's always exciting to release something, you know, it's something fresh. People were kind of uh, anticipating it, but given the circumstances, it was, you know, a little bittersweet that we couldn't play, uh, you know, any shows to promote or have a release party or potentially go on tour. So we may do with what we had. And uh, I'd say it was pretty successful. Have you guys tried like doing virtual shows yet? No, we haven't. We've, um, we, we we kind of talked about this before where we, we felt a bit strange, um, you know, potentially charging people for them to watch us play uh, on a screen. I think the, the best part about playing live is the crowd interaction, which is something that we obviously miss very much. We have uh, recorded a couple live videos um, of us playing our music, so that'll be fun to share. But uh, as far as actual live stream concerts, I'm not sure that's something we're super into um, unless, you know, who, who knows what the future holds. It might be something that we're forced to do eventually if, if we really can't play for, for too much longer. Hopefully not. But like Jared yeah. said, if we got to play sometime and if, you know, things don't ease up uh, sooner than later, then uh, maybe we will do that. And have you guys been to any virtual live shows, whether it's paid or not? I have not personally. Uh, I mean, like when bands release live in studio stuff, I always I always love watching that because the, the sound is usually pretty good. Uh, those BBC Live Lounge videos or what Howard Stern does in his studio. Uh, but as for attending a live concert, I haven't. I mean, just to get this interview set up, I had to switch rooms to get the Wi-Fi sorted out. So who knows what, <laughs> what problems that's going to pose? Yeah. What about you, Jared? No, I haven't. I haven't myself either. Uh, like Al said, I've watched a couple um, live videos and live performances that were pre-taped, but uh, live, you know, in real time, I haven't watched any videos, paid or not paid. On to the music. Do you guys have any fondest musical memories that you want to share? I mean, uh, the first one that comes to mind is is one of. Uh, it's actually my first time on stage ever, and and you know, recently I've been thinking back as to, we've been doing this for seven years uh, about seven years now playing live in one form or another but my first time in front of a crowd of people was when I was in the third grade and the teacher asked us uh who wants to play Elvis in the spring concert we're doing an Elvis concert and I don't know what came over me I'd never sung before and I did it I was a shy kid and I said I do and I got in front of, <laughs> in front of all those people and I sang Hound Dog and ever since then this is all I've ever wanted to do did you have to wear like an Elvis costume too? I didn't have to, but I did. Okay. <laughs> I did. If there's one thing about Al, he will always go the the one above that is necessary. Yeah. Uh, for me, a musical memory. I mean, I have a, I have plenty. Um, some similar to Al, where I, I performed in in you know sp um, school concerts, spring concerts, something like that when I was younger. Uh, I think my favorite one was probably getting on stage as, for the first time as a band member. Um, and it actually wasn't with the band I'm currently with. It was like a high school band, but um, it was a spring concert at my high school, same thing. And um, I think we, we covered Kings of Leon's You Somebody, which was super fun. And, you know, it's got that anthemic chant throughout the song. So the crowd was really into it. Uh, I think that was that was probably the moment for me where I was like, I really want to play in a band live for a long time. And you guys formed in 2016, but you only started releasing music in 2019, or maybe like you released it and took it down. No, that's correct. So yeah, uh, we, 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 we start, okay. Long story short, Jared, Mass, Marty, and I, uh, we started jamming together in 2014. Uh, in 2016, we started a band called the 67s and it was a lot of basement jamming and local shows. Uh, three years later, things started to get a bit more serious. The songwriting got better and we wanted to take it to the next level. We became Technicolor Dreamers after a group discussion. And that's when we first started releasing uh, original music. But a lot of time in the basement. 
and being a, in a band like now is hard enough. So, I mean, how's it been with COVID? How has working like remotely been for you guys? Uh, well, at the beginning, it was it was rough. I think, you know, like Al said, we've jammed, you know, usually at least once a week since we started playing together, which was, you know, about five or five or six years ago now, I guess. So um, at the beginning, it was weird because we weren't playing. It was a good two or maybe three months that we hadn't played together. And we we tried to do a little bit of, you know, this type of Zoom stuff to, to get back and forth with each other uh, on some ideas. But, you know, it just doesn't feel the same. Zoom doesn't really um, carry the energy as well, I guess, as in person. Uh, it was definitely strange. And when we were able to get back, it was it was it was great. Um, and it's still great now that we're still technically able to jam together. Uh, we have a very large jam space so we can take our space between each other and, and practice still. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing is the live shows that we're, we're unable to play. I think in 2019, we played quite a few. We were playing almost a show a month. Um, we, we, we played our, we, we released our debut EP in 2019, March of 2019. And then we had an EP launch show in April of 2019. And I think following that show, we played one show a month all the way pretty much until COVID struck. It was a good pace. Give or take. Yeah, it was great. We were, we were having fun. It was, you know, different locations around the city. Uh, and the more shows we played, the more we saw some familiar faces, but also new faces as well. And uh, yeah, we had a great momentum going, obviously. I'm sure many other people did as well, but you know, this is, it is what it is. On to the EP, I mean, it was recently released. It's only formed of three songs. So did some not make it onto the project? Well, it's self-funded, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to do the best we could with the, with the budget we had, and we picked the best three. I mean, we uh, we have a catalog of, of original songs, a lot of which are not recorded yet, which we plan to go into the studio and record. But we said, let's make a cohesive product uh, something that, you know, you can listen to consecutively. And we picked three songs that did that. And uh, we also made a music video, which was which was a blast. Between your debut EP and this one, what major differences have you seen? Has it evolved in a sense? Uh, I would say the music is better, but I think you're always more in love with, it's a, you know, a recency bias. You're all, always more in love with what you've made most recently. Yeah. Uh, I still listen to our, our debut EP and, uh, you know, our, our fans still stream it. Uh, so it's still being listened to. Uh, but I think there's just much stronger musicianship. And I think we get each other and our our sound really a lot more now. And, um, you know, as time goes on or as, as time, time goes, goes by, as time goes by. Yeah, that's the song off the EP. Um, <laughs> as time goes by, I think we all just understand each other more as musicians and we are a lot more familiar with the sound we're going to go with. So it's easier to write songs and easier to write songs that we're going to be happier with for a longer period of time. I think. Yeah. What Jared's saying is he thinks it's hot stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. Um, you post on your Instagram that more things are coming. So what are those things? Mm. <laughs> uh, like Jared said before, we have a, uh, some live in studio stuff that we're going to release uh maybe another music video coming but you'll see maybe mm -hmm. uh and you know hopefully get back into the studio soon but honestly uh it's pretty wide open right now so we're just looking to do what we can to be creative and engage with our fans in the only way that we can which is unfortunately through the internet so we want to keep making content and uh keep making music Amazing. I can't wait. This is a fun question. If you guys could describe your music as an animal, which animal would it be and why? Wow. Can we get, do we get two animals? One each? Yeah. One each. One each. <laughs> okay. I'm, okay, Al, you go first because I'm not, I'm Well, not no, sure. I want to pick the one that you're not going to pick because I know which one you are going to pick. So you go first. I, I don't, I don't know which one I'm going to pick. So you can't know which All one right. I'm going to pick. Okay, fine. I, I'm going to, I'm going to go with two animals. One, number one, because my favorite animal, I'm going to go with a lion because we're ferocious. Nice. And number two, I'm going to go with a flamingo because we're unique. I, I, I might have gone with flamingo. I knew you were thinking uh, flamingo. Yeah, Yeah. well, so our, we have we have um, t-shirts, merch, band, band merch, and on the back of our t-shirt, it's in the back or the front, I think it's the back, there's back, a, yeah. a pink flamingo on the picture. So that's the first thing that came to mind. 
I think, uh, yeah, unique, I think, is the best thing to describe us. And uh, flamingos are, are pretty unique. You don't see them very often, I suppose. Great way to describe your music, actually. <laughs> Thank you. And, no problem. And last question, do you have any favorite artists at the moment, whether it's up and coming or really popular? Right now, I'm in a bit of a, a hole of uh, the internet and Steve Lacey, the, inter the band The Internet and, and Steve Lacey. Uh, really big fan of his guitar work and even though it's not super rock driven as our music is um you know anybody who's got guitar good I, being one of the guitar players in the band uh, anybody who has music with with good guitar work on it uh has got my has got my ear so i i would say that's probably what i'm into right now something i'm listening to uh as, as for new releases is uh daddy's home by saint vincent it just blew my mind i think I, I don't know if the rest of the tracks became available but the first two that uh, that she put out were just like a time capsule back to 1975 so i really enjoy that it's bowie-esque and it's original and it's, it's just a lot of fun so that's the most recently downloaded thing on my uh phone well thank you so much guys it was so much fun talking to you thank you yeah thanks for having us pleasure